It is time for the hot seat, the profitable pineapple hot seat. This is where we take your listings and we take them through our system of how we optimize listings. We take them through our SEO system where we look at the keywords that you're ranking for, what keywords you might be missing as well. And then we see if we can improve that by improving your titles, your bullets, your description and everything like that. If you want to participate in the hot seat live and let us go over your listing, make sure you go to profitablepineapplefarm.com. Join our mastermind. You're going to notice other people on this. This is our mastermind call. We do this every Wednesday. So if you're watching the recording of this, that means you're watching something that we recorded probably two to three months ago. And so if you want to be with us live as we go through this, so you can get up to date on strategies, tactics around not just Amazon, but building a business and a life that you love to build then head to ProfitablePineappleFarm.com. Sign up. It's cheap. It's worth it. Come on board. All right. Without further ado, let's jump in. Organic or Vegan Mia Organics. And by the way, Life, this is great branding. Your brand name is great because you're like specifically in your brand name targeting your target demographic. And I just think that's a great job because you're going to repel a lot of people, but you're going to attract the people that you want to attract, which are vegan organics, which that's what you want to do. So great job there. Um, which one is your best seller that is no that cut sales because of the sales thing? Shine, the hair oil. So one. the one we're going to go over today? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So we will start with not that one because I promised this one because she was a uh, leftover from the last one. So um, this is a soap manufacturer for goat milk soap. This is Kayla. Kayla, say hi to everybody. She's like unmuting. Hi. So actually Kayla and I have a, a long history. We go back, way back. So I met Kayla at a farmer's market in 2015. And the only reason I approached her at the farmer's market, because there was about, as you guys know, with farmer's markets, about 20 to 30 different soap manufacturers there. And she was the only one that was standing in the front of her booth. Everybody else was (laughs) sitting in the way back, like acting like they were too good to really interact with customers. Kayla was in the front interacting with everybody that went by. And so ever since then, we've established a, a pretty great relationship. And As a joke back in 2017, 18-ish, I said, trust me, you can sell this soap for a lot more than you're selling it for. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove it to you. And she started manufacturing our soap for us, our tea tree soap. And we ended up getting it to around hundred sales a day at one point. And it was $15 per bar. So it wasn't a cheap soap by any means. And it was mostly just to prove the point that when you specifically market your product towards a demographic, you will sell a lot more at a higher price point than if you just broadly sold it. And so that's a big selling point that we've had with, with her. And we we're still friends. We still talk pretty much, I'd say weekly, we text with each other and then we meet on zooms every once in a while as well. And that's the biggest thing with you, Kayla, that we've talked about in the past. So with your Carolina Soapworks brand, you've been very broad with your marketing. It's a luxury brand. It's it's amazing soap. If you guys have never tried her soap, it's really good soap. I would try it. Any goat milk soap is really good, but there are a couple of companies that I would recommend and she's one of them. And the thing is with your broad marketing, it's very hard to niche down to a specific customer. And so when you're writing your emails, you're writing it to a broad market instead of a specific customer. And so I know that you're starting to go through a rebrand with your brand as far as like focusing on dry skin and eczema, but I would encourage you to take it even further, figure out if you can go even further with that branding and really go all in on one specific thing. Cause a lot of soap companies do go in for dry skin and eczema. And so really trying to figure out maybe something else. I mean, it's a, it's a good route to go, but you're going to be competing with all the other soap companies as well. And so I, I see that you added that to it. Just be careful with claims, of course, making sure that you don't say you treat eczema or anything like that. Um, looking at this listing, these two are prime real estate for bullets, for benefits. So explaining the product benefits in your second and your third are going to be better than what you have here. So you're starting to do that here. This is still talking more about features. And then you can see down here a benefit, but the rest of these are more feature driven. And so you really want to focus on why that feature is important. Why are organic oils important? Why is creamy handmade cold process important? I have no idea. And I sold a lot of soap in my career. I have no idea why cold processed is important. What does creamy do for me? Cruelty-free, explain what that means too. Okay. Exfoliating, uh, most people will know what that means, but you could still explain why that's important. So really focusing on the benefits around this. This is the key one though. There's a lot of goat milk soap out there, of course, and you explain it well down here. So why goat's milk soap? You're getting into the benefit of it. 
So goat's milk soap contains alpha hydroxy acids. That's a feature such as lactic acid. That's another feature, which helps remove dead skin cells that are itching and irritating from the skin surface. That's a benefit. So you could dig even deeper with that benefit. Why is that benefit important for you? What does removing dead skin cells do for you? It removes itching and irritation. So then keep digging deeper. So we have our feature. What's your benefit on top of that feature? And then if you can, ask yourself why that benefit's important. And that's when you get into really good copywriting. And the sad part is now we can use Jasper to really help us out with that. So we can start to use Jasper to like say, my feature of my soap is, let's actually just try it. Let's just do it for fun. As you guys know, I always have Jasper pulled up. Okay, let's see. Why is... Let's just start off with what. What is cold pressed soap? You can do this with chat GTP, GPT or whatever. Cold pressed soap is a type of soap made through the usual process. Cold process soap making method involves using a minimal heat, typically under 140 degrees in order to preserve the natural glycerin and essential oils that give the handmade soap its beneficial qualities. So there we go. So you've learned what that does. Okay. Why does that matter? Many benefits, including being more nourishing on the skin than regular soap. So there's a benefit of a benefit. It's also known for the ability to retain natural glycerin. We talked about that one. The beneficial, just to warn you guys, there's a storm rolling through uh, Columbus right now. So if Jordan, me, and Chris are gone all of a sudden, you'll know why. But additionally, cold pressed soaps are often made with higher quality ingredients that help improve skin health in a natural way. So why does it improve skin health? Because it increases hydration, prevents irritation, and protects the skin from environmental stressors. How does it protect against environmental stressors? So again, we're just going deeper down this rabbit hole. It's kind of like, just keep asking yourself why, and then you're going to learn, provides a barrier between your skin and the elements. So I'm guessing your cold pressed soap has higher quality ingredients that aren't heated up, so they're not ruined. Therefore, it creates a barrier on your skin, which is then going to create an additional barrier on top of your skin, which is going to help prevent anything from going into your body. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So you just got to reward that into a feature-rich or benefit-rich bullet point. I have a question. Is it okay or is it bad and looks tacky to talk about the difference between cold process and triple milled soap and triple milled. I mean, your dove and your, all those cheaper soaps, there's, you know, most people don't know the difference, but of course I wouldn't name a name brand, but is it okay to point out the differences? If it benefits the end buyer? Yes. Okay. If it doesn't matter, then no. Okay. So I don't know if it matters or not. If you can spin it into a benefit that will benefit the customer. Yes. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That's what really matters. So the reason I'm guessing they do it is because it results in the soap being harder, sturdier, and longer lasting. And so triple milled has fewer impurities due to its, so it it is good. It just meant it'd be as good as cold pressed. Right. Right. Okay. Cool. Yep. All right. So really getting, and you just want to have one benefit per photo. Okay. And then you want your best benefit, the one that sells it the one that's in your reviews the most to be the first benefit photo. The second benefit photo is what you see next. And so you can take like helium 10 and you can look at your reviews and you can see, you can do a specific review. You might be able to do this with Zanguru, but I haven't figured that out yet. You can do a review insight analysis. And then you can come see here. You can see what's mentioned the most sensitive skin. So you can click on this and see how they're using it in context. So it's great on my sensitive skin. So your first bullet should be about sensitive skin. Your first photo should be about sensitive skin. The second one will probably be soap smells. I'm guessing it's soap smells great. Soap smells blah, 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 because it's all five stars. So let's dig into that one a little bit more. Very nice scent, good scent, skin feeling soft, soap lathers up well. So first bullet, sensitive skin, It's great for sensitive skin, going to leave your skin feeling soft. Second bullet, second photo, or third photo. Soap smells great. Of course, make it better than what I'm doing. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. Because you can see smells good, smells great. Wait to try. I can't wait to try it. It's probably what they're saying there. And then goat's milk. So a lot of people are writing about goat's milk. They've never tried it before. Trying to think of how I could spin that into a bullet. But then just keep going through these. So now we're getting into fewer reviews. But okay. Does that give you kind of an idea? It does perfectly. And then this one. So again, no harsh chemicals feature vitamins. It's a feature. What do the vitamins do for me? What does leaving these chemicals out do for me? What does rich in protein vitamins and minerals do for me? Alpha hydroxyl acids. What does that do for me? I don't care about what it is. I care about what it does for me. What problem does it solve for me? Now, 
Taking it a step further, what problem does it solve for my eczema patient? What problem does it solve for my dry skin? So again, these are all features. Replace all the features with benefits and I guarantee your conversion rate will go up. Okay. Go ahead. Hey, it's Dr. Travis Ziegler, and I wanted to thank you for watching this video. I just wanted to take a brief couple seconds to let you know about a free Amazon PPC masterclass that I have. Just head to ProfitablePineapple.com to sign up for that free Amazon PPC masterclass, or you can click the link down below in the description. I'll see you inside. I have some feedback starting back in search. I could just share my screen or we could just type them into search, uh, whatever works best. So with goat notes, so, so what I like to also look is, you know, how are we going to get them on the listing? Because it's great to get feedback there, but first, how are we going to get them there, right? So with me, a lot of times, every time people ask about packaging, you know, how's it going to show up in search and how's it going to show up on mobile? And here you've got the text on the goat's milk soap, but... I think there's a lot of opportunity here is like when you redo your packaging with your rebrand, make your text larger, bolder, easier to see and search. So people don't, are gives them the reason to click because a lot of people aren't really reading titles as much. They're flipping through, looking at the, at the photos. I mean, here it's there, but it's so subtle here. The text sense. is too small, too small here. Uh, I got to kind of be like, okay, black time tar. And I see a goat. Okay. I get it. It's goat's milk. Caprina. Okay. This is a little bit bigger, but it's blurry. Again, small text. So if you're, you have an opportunity here to be the goat milk soap company with large, bold text on your packaging here, this brand, there's a lot of white space. They could definitely make this text larger. Maybe move the logo to the bottom, make it bigger in search. So with there, there's a lot of opportunity in here, you might have some of the larger text here because it's bold and it stands out right here. Carolina Soapworks. Okay, it's great, but there's a little goat here. You know, make it so people can see what the product is and what it's going to address in that packaging. And because, you know, give me a reason to, to click on yours. Um, when I look at your brand as well, you know, it's showing up here as well. I did that. Here, what was that? I just want to add one thing to that. So yeah. uh, one thing I've noticed with a lot of brands that are really successful is uh, so similar to like headline search ads, whenever you put like the keyword that they're searching for in the headline search ad, it's like you're reading the customer's mind. What I found really successful for a lot of brands is they're putting their top search term keyword on their actual product so that so that when they're actually searching and they're making it big and bold and like Adam's saying, so that when they're searching for that high volume keyword, it's like they're, you're reading their mind. You know exactly like, oh, that's that's what I just searched for. And that's the product I want. And they're, uh, it's almost like subtly trying to um, get them to buy them, buy the product, just direct them towards your product. Okay. So have the, one of the major or the, the biggest, best um, search term on the packaging itself. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So like, like mm -hmm. I, believe, I think uh, goat milk uh, soap is, is like one of your top keywords. So definitely. Okay. Make that bold. Okay. You could even distinguish, you know, one for, Goat milk for hydration or for extra dry skin or something like that. I know you gotta stay with eczema, but I mean, I like to look at Mary Ruth sometimes or like the vitamin categories because a lot of times supplements um, are really good. Like here, still could be bigger, but here it, it stands out. Multivitamin, multi-mineral, liquid multi. So it's bigger. And so this is just some, some other opportunities to look for as well. Okay. I, have, I have a few suggestions on your images. I noticed the type is fairly small and cluttered. You may want to, you know, like take that cold press, that one that Travis, you just were on, uh, maybe break that out into three images, you know, good for dry skin and make them bolder because, you know, as you know, Amazon shoppers scan and skim and you want to make sure those images really pop out with the text right now. That's really busy. I got to read what that, 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 that good for dry skin. I mean, it's just a lot to read when I'm shopping. So you may want to um, break them out a little bit more for benefits on a separate image. And also, I don't think you have any humans in any of your images, do you? No. Would be a good idea. You know, and again, having a human looking at you in the image probably would create an emotion, more of an emotional bond with the image, especially uh, if your target market is perhaps females, you know, young females, old females, whatever, I'd rather see an image of a person than a goat for, you know, <laughs> just it, relate to the, relate to the audience. The goats I love it. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and maybe get a, you know, see if you can find a cute image of a goat or an illustration done where the goat is a little more comical and attractive and friendly. That might also attract people to your listing as well, or at least could okay. help, help them get a click and a conversion. That makes sense. Or use Jasper Art to create these wonderful masterpieces. Wow. I'm kidding. Don't use these. These are terrible. Well, no, no, <laughs> but I need to learn how to use Jasper. I've been really interested in it. You don't need to. It's just a matter of focusing on what I just used it to show you how to dig deeper into the benefits, but you can do that on your own. I just did it using Jasper because it speeds you up quite a bit. Right. I love it. All right, let's take a look at the back end of your listing and then we'll move quicker through the, the next couple ones. I just wanted to really dig deep into this one just because um, it was our first one of the day. So wanted to dig a little deeper for it. But again, going back to your bullets, 100% money back guarantee, it's good. It's not what's going to sell me. It's what's going to close me, but it's not going to sell me. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm not going to be like, okay, money back guarantee. I'm definitely buying this. I'm going to buy it because it's great for acne and eczema and I have eczema. And then I read the second bullet and I like that too. And then finally I get to the fifth one and it says hundred percent money back guarantee. And I'm like, okay, might as well try it because the, the benefits sold me. That's what matters. Um, we'll just briefly go, you need to add a brand story because that will go across all your ASINs. So talk about your story. And this is a great, great picture. It's not benefit driven, but it's cute and what people shopping in the space will like. And it's just a good picture to have, but then your small business thing that can be part of your brand story instead of part of your A plus content. This is a, this is a real picture from the farm, right? Yep. And then I like the cross selling opportunities right here. Um, I believe this is the older A plus content. And so it is, yeah. upgrading to the premium will help out. And then also adding Spanish if we haven't done that yet. So that would be something to do. And then focusing on videos too. Yep. We're working on that. That goat should be your mascot. Say that again? You should use that goat as your mascot. I love that. Yeah. Well, so I just think about, you know, plastering them everywhere, but yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit more professional. All right. Let me add your keywords into here and then we'll see how you rank compared to everybody else. So this is going to be your top listings. All right. So you can actually see that your optimization score is actually higher than the top listings for goat milk soap. So that's good. Okay. That means you're, you're hitting a lot of keywords, your titles, your bullets, your description, your back end. they're all hitting a lot of keywords. So that's good. That means you're doing a good job there. What you can do with this is you can go in here and actually see what keywords you might be missing. And so botanical, if that applies to you, you're not a goat milk base. So I'd make that almost a negative keyword. Let me actually. Botanical is a name brand. Botanical? Yeah. That's why I didn't add it in the back end initially. Botanical oh. is not a name brand. It, it's but a, botanicals are used in all natural things. It just means relating to plants. Oh, I, I oh. saw a company called Botanical something, so I, I didn't include it. Yeah, that's okay. You can you can add it because it's you, the actual name of botanical is not trademarked. It's probably like botanical gardens or something like that. Gotcha. Okay. You're not lotion, so that would be a negative keyword in your um, ads. You're not a sulfur soap, so that'd be a negative keyword in your ads. Then you're not a base. That'd be a negative keyword. Uh, Vermont and patchouli. You're not a patchouli. These are probably all name brands except for patchouli, which is a scent. Goat milk formula. Nope. You're not formula. That'd be a negative. Bulk. You're not really that. So you actually have a lot of the, the keywords that you need to have. And mostly I would just scrape this list for negative keywords for your, your ads. Okay. Do they make Nag Champa soap? That will take me back to my high school. Yes. I used to have that. Yeah. That's funny. All right, cool. But yeah, great job on the listing. The listing's great. Uh, just a matter of buttoning up the bullets to focus on benefits and the, the photos to focus on benefits. Images. I think yeah, if you videos. focus that, that will change everything for you. Okay. We're and you, don't have to, you don't have to hire a model to get photos taken. You could right. find stock photos with just a soap bar. Don't get renderings because that just looks fake and I hate it. But you can get like a stock photo of somebody using a soap bar that looks like yours and be able to go with that. Or you don't even have to have the soap bar in the photo. You could have somebody just washing their face or, you know, washing their body or something like that. Okay. Another another resource is billo, B -I -L -L -O com. You can find some, they have a list of people who will, you know, do videos for you. I've used them a couple of times and... You, you can have them redo it. It's relatively inexpensive, under $100. And they have um, a pretty good portfolio of people. So you can just send them a bar of soap or whatever you want them to show off and direct them as to what you want to do. Yeah, Chris told me about them. I think I'm going to go that route. So yeah, Billow, 
Billow, we're actually going to be um, bringing on the CEO of Billow probably in the next couple months. Nice. We're just kind of go over how to use Billow and best practices for it. And then he might even give our mastermind group special pricing on it too. Nice. Also something that's kind of under, underutilized, I think the, the new feature that uh, Amazon added in creative assets is the, uh, the ability to use like free stock images. You can just search for any image. I think it pulls it from maybe Shutterstock or something. But just a quick suggestion, if you're looking to add like a human using the soap, make sure that uh, they're like covered in a robe or something. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I've worked with other companies that like, like it was like a fitness thing and they had someone like a female in a sports bra and they kept getting flagged for it because they weren't actually selling a sports bra and it was deemed like inappropriate. So just make sure that like, while that would seem like something that you should be able to do, they'll flag it every time. Okay. Thank you. All right. So this is chlorella tablets. Pull it up. So this is John's. I don't know if John's on the call, but recently did a rebrand, correct? Yeah, we did new packaging. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. It looks a lot better than the old packaging, which was that. Yeah. So yeah, that's something just to take away. Number one from this is the fact that this, I agree, doesn't do much. How did you go about your rebrand? Uh, I found like what was kind of popular on Amazon, like white background for the main keywords or for the background of where your keyword is. And then I wanted to take kind of the sunburst that we had from before. So people still had some connection, but made it more of a sun instead of green. And then and I actually use that pick few, pick for you. Yeah, to do the final, I had a couple of designs that I liked. And so I used that to justify, which was the final design to go with. So yeah, a couple I, things I, that I like about this is that you made it more colorful, even though you have more white on it you still made it more colorful by adding more colors with yellow, green. Now, going back to what we were talking about with Kayla and the soap, you've done actually both. So you've made your brand big and the product big. And so there's a reason to make your brand big and there's a reason to make your product big on your packaging. You make your product big if you're trying to be an Amazon seller and you want to stick out on the search and you want to know, people to know exactly what they're going to be buying when they buy your product. You make your brand big if you're trying to become a brand like on Shopify. And so Adam did a, showed Mary Ruth's. Mary Ruth's yeah. does a great job of doing both as well. Let me show you guys. And the reason this is important for like someone like Mary Ruth, they're a nine figure brand now, is that Mary Ruth has become the brand. It's the um, CEO's wife and co-founder. And I think she's the pretty much like the chief marketing officer, but this is her. And they make their branding very big, but they also make yep. their product really big. So you know exactly what you're trying to buy, but you also know the brand that's coming with it. And so that's what you want to think about when you're balancing your, your labels is how much do you want to push your brand? I recommend a lot. And how much do you want to push focusing on your branding and focusing on the product that you're trying to sell to? I hope that makes sense. And you've done a great job yep. with this one. Whereas in this one, there's no brand on it at all, except for that yep. little tiny bit right there. Right there. So great job in bringing the brand back and really focusing on that. I think that's a really great job. This is important to have supplements facts just because most people leave it out and it's hard to find it. Not most people, but a lot of people leave it out and it's very hard to find. Most people that are searching for chlorella tablets know why they're searching for it, right? Yeah. 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 For the most part. Like, I don't know why I would take this, but yep. uh, this one I would say is... Again, feature-based. So why, of course, raw and organic, we all know what that means. Nutritious with vitamins and minerals, of course, that's it's good for you. Complete protein, filler-free, cracked cell wall. So this is kind of like your in-between feature and benefits, but yeah. just kind of saying why that's important would be like, why does this matter? Cracked cell wall. Okay. Yeah. Like, so you, I don't yeah. Know. yeah. So you can get the nutrients inside because otherwise if you yeah. just ate without the cracked cell wall, you wouldn't get anything, any benefit okay. from it. So better nutrient absorption because of a cracked cell wall. Okay. Don't use those words, but you can get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, is, this is cool, but I don't know if this is a selling point. Okay. You're, you're trying to appeal to the environmentally conscious, conscious people, but is that what's going to sell the product to somebody that's looking at chlorella? I don't know. I don't yeah. believe so because they're... Chlorella comes from the ocean, right? Yeah, this actually doesn't. It comes from fresh water. Okay, fresh water? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, I do like that it eliminates. I don't know if it needs to be featured on a photo that it okay. eliminates waste. And then easy to swallow is always good. You actually swallow these? I thought you chewed them or dissolve yeah, these. Yeah, these you swallow, yeah. You can't chew them. My daughter chews them, my two-year-old, but mm. she has a 
green mouth when she's all done. I'm sure. <laughs> so it kind of sticks in your mouth, teeth. So I swallow them. So this is always, if this is good, if it's a differentiation. So like yeah. we had a photo like this for our omega threes because our omega three was half the size of everybody else's. As you guys know, omega threes are like this big, they're like 10 inches long and ours yeah. is only like a half inch. And so it was, it was supposedly easier to swallow, but actually it was harder to swallow because it was smaller because it was actually, oh, that's big. interesting. But we, we showcased that it was smaller and we compared it yeah. to other gigantic omega-3s on the market. So if this is smaller than like your competitors, maybe put it beside your competitor too. Okay. And like have your competitors in here too. C competition just as big as or bigger than this, if that's the case. Yeah. Now, now, would you want that? Because you'd have to take more to get the same. Because some of our competitors, like this is a 250 milligram and some competitors are 500 milligram. And so for me, like if I take, I take five or eight at a time. So for these, it's super easy because they're so small. It's kind of like chewed up food almost. Whereas the bigger 500 milligrams, I have to take like two at a time, you know? But I don't know if that's a benefit or not for people or if they're like, oh, that means I have to take so many more, you know? I would consider smaller better just because it's easier to swallow. Most people have okay. trouble swallowing. Okay. But that's just my opinion. I don't know if anybody else has an opinion on that. These are good, easy to swallow. That's a benefit just because yeah, pills are hard to swallow for a lot of people. Protein packed, people are looking for protein. I didn't know that chlorella provided protein. So that's pretty neat. I'm actually just going to try these for a month just to see how, how they go. And then um, this is a feature. It's a good feature to have. And most people want to see that on a listing, but right. talk about why that's important. So with our omega-3s, third-party lab tested, re-esterified triglyceride-based fish oil. And what that meant is that so most omega-3s come in triglyceride form, which is the most bioavailable, but it has impurities. Okay. So we take that and we convert it into ethyl ester. Ethyl ester form is not as bioavailable, but it takes out the impurities. So what we do, or what we did, I'm not with the company anymore, but what we did is then we re-esterified it back into triglyceride form. So we took it from triglyceride, the ethyl ester base, back to triglyceride. And what that does is it removes the impurities, but then takes it back to the bioavailable form. And okay. so the fact that we did the extra process is why we're so much more expensive than everything else on the market. And so we explain that. We esterified the, I'm using the correct terminology, esterified the triglyceride form to remove impurities. And then we re-esterify it back to triglyceride form to make it more bioavailable. So we explain why that process is important. So why is third-party tested, no detectable impurities or bacteria? That's good. Yeah. So you kind of put it in there. That's good. Cool. Brand story, put that in here. Okay. Brand story goes across all your ASINs. Okay. And so you make it once and then it goes across at the top at all your ASINs. Okay. And therefore you don't have to put anything in the, the bottom. Yeah, that's great. And then maybe switching this to the premium A plus content, you can get some videos in there as well. But yep. this is one of my favorite things to do is the cross sell. Okay. It's huge, 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 huge. All right. Let's take a look at yours in the back end. Let's see. All right. So let's look at all these optimization scores. So why are they... Is this you too? Uh, no. Okay. Just looks like an old package of yours. What's going on with this one? Let me actually compare one thing here. Is yours not organic? Yep, mine's organic. You're not showing it in your listing at all. That could be one of the biggest things that's causing your... Yeah. Yeah. So it's in your name, but I don't see it in your title, bullets, or description. So let's just see what will happen if we just put it into your title. Okay. As the first word. So organic doubles it. Wow, that's huge. So what to do? Put organic at the front of your title and that will double your listing score and that will get you pretty much up to here. Let's look at this other one, this 20,000 one. Um, there's a misspelling right there of Calera. Let's see what happens when we put Calera in. Yeah, so Corella comes up. What I would do with Calera is it actually gets a decent amount of searches per month is that needs to go in your back end. Chlorophyll, is that in the front end? Yeah, it has a lot of chlorophyll in it. Is it up here? Yeah, chlorophyll right there. So let's take that out. So let's put this misspelling in. And you have commas in your back end. You can remove okay. all those commas. Okay. And then we'll put that one in. Sorry, Jordan, I'm doing it again. I know. Organic burst chlorella. What's organic burst chlorella? I have no idea what burst is. Here's another misspelling that you're not, you don't have in your listing. This one does not have spirulina. I know you have another one that has that burst. Let's just look what that means. It might even benefit you to put the singular and plural form of organic 
in the title. Don't be cracked. That's uh, some people are using. Yeah, cracked burst. cell wall. I think yeah, that's that's what I think that burst is it means cracked cell wall. So it's that burst because it gets three thousand searches. So that's a hundred a day of people searching for burst. All these misspellings we need to get advertising on and organic burst chlorella. So best quality, superior quality, cracked wall. Cracked cell wall burst sun grown microalgae. Burst in there will be big. And you can see we're already almost triple what we started. Is it fermented? No. Okay. So you don't want that one? Supplement. So you don't have supplement in your listing at all. So we'll just put that to the back end or you can put it in the front end. We're up to 10,500. Put that in the back end. Capsules, heavy metal detox. Are you from Korea? No. Okay. Probably still put Korea in the back end. Just like Okay. That. So with yours, there is just a ton of misspellings. Yeah. Chloral is a little not common. Yes. And then you have some back end or some name brands. But then look at that. We're already up. To 11,388. So organic to the first part of your title, all those misspellings in your back end, advertising going, of course, we'll bring this up to Chris, but get advertising going on all those misspellings. If we don't have it already, we might already have it there. Yeah. And then, yeah, other than that, I think this is great. Uh, okay. You're missing one bullet. So really focusing that bullet around something. I don't know, something that we haven't talked about in here. Okay. Is this helpful? Yeah, hugely. All right. Who did we have next? Can I, can we I have... just make a really quick recommendation on that additional yes, bullet? You might want to talk about the heavy metal detox, just because that seems like that's something that a lot of people are searching for. And it also just sort of speaks to the benefits of the product a little bit more as well. We tried creating a listing for heavy metal detox. Amazon didn't allow it because there's, I don't know if it's for research. So is there, I know we could say like cleanse. If we put it in a bullet, is that okay versus the title? You know, if they weigh them differently, because we tried to put it in the title and- It will still flag it either way. Okay. Yeah, it will. So heavy metal cleanse, maybe try that or something. You could put it in the, still flags it. You could put it in the, like the questions. Because okay. In the questions. All right, let's move on to Life's Vegan Mia Organic. Beautiful packaging. Thank yeah, you. stands out really well. That was going to be my first thing that I said as well. Again, this is benefit driven, so proven to significantly increase hair growth, which is kind of the main reason I would want to take this after seven months of use. And then you kind of give what is in there that does that. So that's good. This could, you could add like a bullet to it, a benefit. It's mm -hmm. great to see it, but just a short choppy benefit right here, five to 10 words. What I like to do with these, so like you already have proven hair growth, plant power, truly <laughs> natural luxury, risk-free. Let's do this one. I'll go over to Jasper and say, summarize this bullet in five to 10 words. Silky, shiny, stronger hair with botanical oils. Mm -hmm. So there's your benefit and your feature all in one. Yeah, that's great. And then I'll just put that right here. You have 100,000 hair follicles. Let's wake them up and get them growing. Yeah, I like that. that one's good. And as seen on, this is cool. This is social proof. So you started losing once they put how many sales your competitors or everybody was getting on the search results. Yeah, it was like almost immediately our sales went down and we're 15, we're down 15% from last month. Okay. And that's without changing anything. So we actually just lowered the price to see if we could get a little bit more momentum. To... Get that traction back. Yeah. And that's what you might have to play for a little bit is just see if you can get your momentum back to above their sales velocity. So then you could take that back from them. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunately the game we might be playing on Amazon now is we're trying to get the sales velocity number because what Amazon do, is doing there is social proof is they're increasing social proof on their platform to increase conversion rate. They don't care what product sells. They just care product sells. And so when you add social proof, you're going to make more money. So there's two things about this listing that are hurting you is the sales velocity on the front end, your review count on the back end. So you only have 86 reviews, your top competitors in this category, how many reviews do they have? Oh my goodness. The top, the top competitor is like 18,000, but they're priced at like $9. So that's where it's also difficult. It's a price point issue. Cause we normally sell at 38, like on our e-com site, we sell at 38. And so we had been selling at 32 on Amazon. And then I was going out of town to Austin actually. And so we increased it to 30 to try and slow it down a little bit. Our sales didn't slow down at 38, even though, you know, our main competitors like eight or $9, but it wasn't until that, that number started popping up that it you know created an issue. So yeah, the other ones have a lot more ratings. I mean, they've been on longer, obviously, but so need to get that hesitate to play the pricing game. Yeah. You don't want to get involved with that, especially when you're going after a $9 product. Believe me when I said that we were managing an account that was doing well, uh, they were doing around $10 million and all they did was play the pricing game. The unfortunate thing is they had to let us go because they couldn't afford us anymore. Well, I don't want to continue the pricing game for sure. I just yeah. wanted to get a little bit of velocity back so that we can bring it back up. It was definitely going to be a short-term play. And I was, you know, it was heartening that our price at 38 didn't slow our sales down. So, and I do have a couple of things that I'm thinking about doing to send in for Vine to at least kind of bump up the review numbers a little bit there. We are sending emails out asking for reviews and I do have an insert to try and collect email addresses to ask for reviews. So yeah, I, I've got two things things. Um, yeah. First off, um, instead of 58, what about 5797? And the same for 45? 
4497. I saw a really good presentation a couple of years ago, and a lot of a lot of people um, associate more with um, two odd numbers, especially at the end of the price. Okay. Uh, and then second, the past year and a half, we've had a lot of bad luck with buying. So I would be very, very careful with them. You already have good reviews there. And it looks like a lot of four them are Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's great because yeah. um, we ju we've just had, I just want to share my experiences that we've had yeah, bad please. luck with buying. We don't even recommend it anymore to anybody. Really? Um, yeah. Oh. It's killed a lot of lists. Okay. Well, so. it kills it before it gets started. Yeah. Going back to the, the social proof real quick. I wanted to bring, this is why I brought that up because this is social proof right here. And so maybe play with bringing that up a little bit more. Okay. Um, these are all great too, but you could probably lower this down a little bit in the thing and focus on the benefits up top and social proof. Okay. Were you in an article with Vogue, Traveler, Vanity Fair, and L? Yes. Do you know the author of the article? I don't, uh, not off the top of my head. I can- How did you get featured in them? They well, so it was actually British. It was the the British version of Vogue and L, and then like Condé Nast. Actually, if you look up, do Condé Nast the um, Traveler, Condé Nast Traveler. Condé that Nast. that one, oh Con, Condé Nast. Sorry, C O N D E. What's the second yeah, word? That one they, right there, Condé Nast Traveler. So Nast. the other thing, I'm biracial, and so they featured us as a as a black woman owned business for that particular product too. So if you look at like that article right there, for example. So they reached out to you and said, "Hey, we'd like to write an article on you." The PR firm that I was working with connected me with them. Okay. Where are you in this whole thing? Right there. there. That was actually before we launched our, our hair product that they originally contacted us. So that's actually our, one of our serums. Okay. So what I'm doing here is looking at the URL mm -hmm. and they, there we go. Okay. There it is. So they're an affiliate for you. That's what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So they're most likely an affiliate or Amazon. Oh, interesting. Okay. And they're making 4% on this. Mm-hmm. If you can get a hold of this person and say, hey, I appreciate you featuring me in this article. If you put me at the top of this, I will pay you three times what they're paying you. So Amazon's paying you 4%. I'll pay you 12%. I'll triple your income for that our products if you put us at the top and I'll drive Google ad traffic to it. To their article. To their article. Okay. Social proof, social proof, social proof. Okay. So that's what you want to do with this one. Okay. To see if you can do it. And then you might do Google. It's a tough one because you're not going after a problem here. You're just going after kind of like the, the black owned beauty brand. Mm -hmm. And so you got to figure out what keywords to go after and mm -hmm. maybe focus on black owned beauty brands Okay. and Google ad that. And it goes to this article. Okay. I'll show you an example of this. So you that's... That up, uh, one thing to add life is that, uh, are you already sending outside traffic to your listings? To my Amazon listings? Yeah. Not right now. I was going to start trying to do a Google. Yeah. I'm set up with the, the Amazon attribution and I was actually going to work on putting the, the Google. There's a brand that I work with that one of our team members reaches out and finds top products. And we, we did exactly what Travis just said for my, for my product. I was able to decrease sponsored product spend and our sales week after week after week, knock on wood continue to get best ever from sending this outside traffic with the Google ads. So is this, is this definitely, it? Sorry. So definitely, definitely do that as soon as possible. And that will really help you with the, with your rankings boost. So sending more Google ads traffic to the Amazon listings for the Amazon attribution. External mm -hmm. traffic. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Really helps. Okay. So I'm not sure where it is. I don't have it on a bookmark. You know, July. Here's or another one that you can look into, but what you can do with this is what is your main keyword for this? Is it organic or, or hair growth oil? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, pretty much. So best hair growth oil. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see some other ones that came up. Right. But what we'd like to do is find articles like this. Here's L Salt Lake Tribune is showing up third organically and Salt Lake Tribune will probably be your best bet, but again, they have this one. They just pick these randomly. They don't even pick them. Oh my. So it's a terrible call to actions too. Uh, wait. And then contact them and ask them to put me in there in the article. At number list. one. And then, so I say as number one, but sending that traffic to Amazon or sending that traffic to my e-com site? Amazon converts better. So okay. sending them to Amazon because... Mm -hmm. 
I'm trying to find you might one. I want that external traffic because they love that, right? External traffic plus you can triple their income. These guys are all just going to their e commerce stores, which is killing their conversion. But you could say, hey, I'd love to get placed in your best multi purpose. Mm -hmm. My product is $40. It converts at 20% on Amazon and I'll pay you 10 to 20% affiliate commission, whatever gets them excited. Okay. And then I just so, put them, I set them up separately on that commission structure in the affiliate program. Okay. Exactly. In the Amazon attribution, right? Like an Amazon okay. attribution link. Yep. And then you then drive Google ads traffic to this page for best hair growth oils, hair growth oils. Okay. And then you're number one, and then you just track it. And we, we do this for our client, some of our clients, not mm -hmm. all of them, because it's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of reach out. We actually reach out quite a bit for every like a hundred people you reach out to, you might get like five responses, okay. but it's worth it because you got to yeah. keep following up and we've gotten placed in a couple articles and it's taken off those brands. Okay. Fabulous. That's a great idea. Thank you. So external traffic helps out quite a bit, but that's going to be how you play the price game on Amazon is you don't lower your prices. You just try to send diverse traffic and that will move you up in their organic rankings. Okay. Perfect. But this is big social proof. Okay. Um, we'll do a quick Zanguru of you as well. You can see your listing is already pretty good. You're in the top 3%. You're pretty much better than all of these. Cool. Pretty sure. And that's just based on keywords. Mark, my, my assistant is on this call and he's responsible for all that. So thanks, Mark. Hey. He's not bad boy? Bad boy otter? <laughs> I don't think so. Is ordinary a brand name? Yeah. I would still put him in the back end because it's it could be a trademark brand name, but it's ordinary. It's a normal word. Okay. Hair growing oil. You don't have that in your back end? No. So let's see. We're at, we're at 40,000 essentially. Let's see what adding those two will do. Takes you just a little bit up. Base skin lather. That's probably Millie, Millie hair growth oil. That's a misspelling of the leading. It's the second okay. one, that second tab next to mine. Oh, gotcha. Mostly just brand names though. Looks like you're doing pretty well. Grother oil. No idea. Cool. Alopecia. Yeah. I don't have that in there. Just be careful. It is a disease term. Right. I think on ba back end would be the best for that. Do you have Spanish A plus content? No. Okay. So you might want to add Spanish A plus content. Okay. Do you know how to do that? No. So uh, when you're, actually, you're... I actually oh. added before, but I just oh, removed do. last yeah last week uh, as part of our uh, keywords on the back end for the A plus content. Since I created the A plus uh, premium A plus content, I just added some, but I just actually updated last week. Okay. Just yeah. It's just, them. it's in the A plus content area. You just add a whole separate A plus for Spanish hair growth. So look how many people misspell growth. Yeah. It's almost a hundred a day. Right. Add that in there. And then of course do ads for these two hair regrowth. Regrowth is a word, but yeah, you guys can kind of get okay. the idea. Yeah. Great. All right. It is past two. I can stick around a little bit longer to do the last two that we promised. Let's see. We had this one. And I think this one, sorry, Ben, we're not going to get to yours or Chuck's. We'll put you guys on the top of the list next time. All right. So Areola Scar Gel Circles Set. This listing looks so much different than all the other ones because you're probably in a, an older, not an older category, but a category that doesn't get as updated as fast. So less scarring, good benefit on the second. Maybe consider putting all four circles out here and testing that. I know you say four pack right there, but you could always put four of these out here just to show it. Let's see. Helps lock in moisture, discourage collagen overproduction, protect against itchy discomfort, and reduces rubbing. So th these two are good benefits. Maybe explain why you want to decrease collagen overproduction. I know it's to decrease scarring, but most people don't know that. And why locking in moisture is good too. So kind of explaining that too, that might help. This is a feature, which is okay, but doesn't have to be quite so high in the list. Discrete. That's another good one because that's probably a big pain point. Peels off easily. That's another good one because people hate peeling off band-aids. Cool. But yeah, that, that's good as well. And then restorative touches. I don't know what that means. I could be uh, just naive in this space, which of course I am, but I don't know what restorative touches is. So I don't know what that means. Triple the help. Why is it triple the help? More than just a scar cream, your silicone scar sheets promote smooth, evenly toned skin by maintaining moisture, regulating collagen and relieving itchy discomfort. So focus on that in the front versus triple the help. People are skimmers. They will skim the first couple words. And if it doesn't suck them in, they won't read the rest. Soft and subtle. That's a decent one. You're starting to focus more on benefits there. Easy to use, of course. Let us care for you. Found a binary. We tend 
to your body and mind through high quality surgery recovery supplies that won't compromise your budget. So just the mission of the brand. And you could always take that out to add another bullet and then add it to you to your brand story. So again, common theme today has been brand story. Nobody seems to have had it. So brand story is a big opportunity. Let me show you guys what that will look like. Do not judge my listings because I have no control over them anymore. Actually, can I, oh, I was just going to say, we do have a brand story. And I, that was one of the things my assistant was asking if you could just even look at, and I didn't know if maybe you could kill two birds with one stone on that, but. Yeah, I can, but I'll just show you where it shows up. So it shows up at the top of your A plus content and it's optimized for mobile. That's why our faces are covered up because on mobile, our faces appear right here. Let's go to the top. Oops. I did you backwards, but that's okay. Social proof right on top. That's good. It's one of the first things that they'll see when they're on mobile. Yeah, I think this is good. Then you have like a frequently asked questions right there. Cool. Yeah, it looks really good. Your branding spot on. It's it's colorful. It pops. It Thank looks you. high end. Thank you very much. I, I designed it, so I really appreciate that. Paisley. What a good idea. All right, let's go into this one and do a quick Zan Guru on the Aerial Order Scars. Also, too, looking at the products yesterday, uh, this product has a lot of opportunity in the space. There's only another one that really has like a lot of like a better review average. So this product has a lot of room for really uh, dominate the, the category even more. Is that is this brand owner on the call today? I think it was Dave. Oh, it wasn't David. David is the caffeine shoes. Who was it? Lisa. No, she's going to watch the replay. Ah, okay. Because she's at 3 a.m. her time. Okay. She could probably get on now. It's like 4 a.m., 4.15. Um, all right. So Silligan's probably a brand name. Scar Away is probably a brand name. Tummy Tuck, those would all be considered, I would consider these negative because you don't want to show up for Tummy Tuck. Scar Away, definitely a brand name. Scar Treatment, maybe put treatment in your back end because you don't want to say it in the front end because you don't want to say you're treating something publicly. So let's see. She's at 25, which is really good. So if we put that, didn't increase her too much, but a little bit. C-section, I'd make C-section a back-end negative, or excuse me, a negative keyword on all your advertising. Same with hysterectomy. Mederma, uh, that's a brand name. Embrace looks like a brand name. Scar therapy, you could add therapy. So I think the mo mostly what you need to do is just focus on benefits a little bit more and then focus on building a negative keyword list based on these words, because otherwise your listing looks pretty good. Breast reduction, so you might not have reduction in there. Let's put that in there, but just a bunch of little words. And then again, of course, making sure that you have sponsored products around these as well. Scar removal. But yeah. This one's pretty easy as well. Not too much, but just a little bit. All right. See you guys all later. That was a and great session, guys. Have Thanks. a good week. Around. See you. Around. Hey, make sure you check out this next video. If you enjoyed this content, you're going to love this next video that I handpicked for you. And what else do they need to do? Like this video and make sure you subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this content.